it used to be about, you know, we'd create this beautiful television spot. Maybe there was a 15 and a 30, and then we would syndicate it across all of our channels. This one singular same brand experience. But this also does open up some big challenges for creative people, just in terms of creative iterations and the amount of content that needs to be created. And, you know, there's been a lot of conversation, obviously, with clients about how do you even budget for this? What kind of recommendations are we going to make to clients moving forward about all that iterative creative? You know, we've seen that as content needs continue to grow and grow, resources being put towards creating those is not growing at that same pace, right? So we have to be more efficient. We have to do more with the same or less. But at the same time, people have come to expect a personalized experience. The big obvious ones, you think about Netflix, you think about Amazon, but in our day-to-day lives, when I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed, I expect to see things that are relevant to me and not just see a shoe that I like, but see it represented in a way that feels relevant to my life. What we have to be doing on the back end is working with Julie, Michelle, the other teams to figure out how do we get really smart about those experiences? How do we automate so that it is also achievable? We have to do some creative problem solving there. You know, one, content doesn't need to be the same maybe level of that production-wise um, as that TV commercial. So how can we do some quicker hitting things that still resonate with a group of people? And maybe it's even just tweaking the last sentence of something and, and you know, putting that out there. So just being thoughtful about that and that production value and just not having that high standard that we once had, you know, people want that authentic content. But also then going back to technology, there's a lot of solutions out there that can help us too with some dynamic content. You know, now is the perfect time. It's It's been part of the conversation for a while, but now I think it really helps advance that side of the technology forward. Does that content already exist oftentimes? So it's just never been leveraged for marketing or one-to-one purposes before? I think it's in some cases, like just thinking of it different. 95% of it is is there. And you just tweak a few things to make it feel personal, customized. Some of the customization and personalization too is like where and how it's delivered, not just what the content is, but getting it to them when they need it and how to start to do some of those priorities. You know, when we think of some of the architectures that we've done in the past around, you know, how to move somebody through the funnel, through the journey, there's maybe 10 different ways we could parse them off. But if there's only 1% of the people in these bottom three, well, then maybe we group those together. You know, so looking at some of the data too, to see where is it worth it to do that and where it's going to make an impact and where maybe it's smaller numbers and we can kind of generalize and group some things too. Not all customers are created equal. Do you have your high net value Mm -hmm. customers and you have people who maybe purchase once and then don't become loyal and they don't purchase again. So this, it seems to me like what we're learning in all of this is that with all of this concentration now on really mining and understanding our own customers for brands, that when you can start to stratify them into high net worth or high value customers, now you know where you really need to make those extra investments and maybe put you know extra budget or extra effort against those than trying to satisfy everybody because not everyone's going to deliver the same. 